Throughout the history of paleontology, there are probably hundreds of fossil specimens that are just absolute shite. They can give you what is tantamount to census data. Oh, ceratosaurs were here. Oh, triceratops-like horned dinosaurs were there. However, all these very common fossils don't tell you just how biodiverse any group of animals were at any given time. This is because of the bias of the fossil record, which destroys most fossils before us bald apes ever get to them. The most atrocious cases of superfluous fossil material of subpar quality are those groups of animals that were extremely common throughout time. If I were to zero in on everyone's favorite dinosaur topic of conversation, you'd see that this is often the case with herbivorous dinosaurs, such as ornithopods and ceratopsians. And of these, the worst offenders are Edmontosaurus and Triceratops, two of the most common dinosaur fossils even when compared to Triassic and Jurassic rock layers. We can throw out Edmontosaurus from this discussion for this video because it's Triceratops that has had the craziest taxonomic history with regard to the vast number of fossils recovered of the beast and beasts just like it over the past 200 years. There have been over 16 species of Triceratops named over the 135 years since it was first officially described. Many of these species were named off actually pretty good fossils skeletons and skulls, but a huge undertaking in the 1990s and 2000s found more solid proof that all of these species could be classified as one of only two valid species, Triceratops prorsus and Triceratops horridus. In the following 30-ish years, more weird Triceratops fossils have been uncovered from different times to those two species, indicating the possibility for new species before and in between the two valid ones. Outside of the species debacle, there have also been well over a handful of genera named on fossils that are now understood by most to be just weird instances of known Triceratops species. One such specimen was published in 1987 by Emily Kobabe and David Festovsky in the Journal of Paleontology. All the way back in the summer of 1983, David Festovsky was on an expedition with the University of California Berkeley Museum of Paleontology led by W.A. Clemens Jr. that happened to be collecting stuff on the ranch of Norman Olson. Festovsky found skull fragments of a horned dinosaur at the V83224 locality, eroding from rock layers that belonged to the Hell Creek Formation in a dry tributary of the actual Hell Creek located near Jordan in Garfield County, Montana. Festovsky and colleagues L. Shetchi and J. H. Hutchison would collect the fossils and bring them back to the California Museum. Once the field jackets were removed and the matrix prepared away from the fossils, this specimen, UCMP128561, would be published as a new genus and species of ceratopsian dinosaur, Ugrosaurus olsoni, meaning Olson's ugly reptile. All in all, it's quite a garbage specimen, just the front rim of the beak or premaxilla bone, the nasal bones, and the front of the nasal horn which is actually a low rounded boss. There is also a chunk of the maxilla bone, a fragment of the lower jaw, plus a single vertebra, and unidentified possible skull and frill fragments. One of the best features to tell Ceratopsians apart is the frill, something that is not present here. The author's very brief description which states, these fragments reveal little of the structure and size of the frill, but show unique sculpturing distinct from that on the boss in that the grooves are shallower and less densely spaced. Tells you all you really need to know on that. It's the shapes and construction of the frill bones plus the presence and anatomy of the frill horns that act as major traits to differentiate between horned dinosaurs. Agrosaurus, therefore, doesn't have much to help it stand out among the extreme anatomical diversity seen across the dozens of Triceratops specimens. Since phylogenetics and the software used for it today were not exactly present during the publication of the Agrosaurus paper, the authors didn't do any quantitative analyses to determine where this proposed Agrosaurus would place in the Triceratopsini tree if it would place there at all. 
The boss-like ridge on the nose is definitely like that commonly seen in Taurosaurus, but the lack of any other bones to point more towards a Taurosaurus or Triceratops verdict means the weird boss could mean anything. This is especially nebulous when there are plenty of super old Triceratops individuals with nose horns that have shrunk and kinda look similar to the Ugrosaurus bump. Under this contention, many other authors would go on to declare Agrasaurus dubious, like Thomas Lehman in 1990, and Peter Dodson and Phil Curry in 1990 as well. However, according to the great Ceratopsian organizer Catherine Forrester, these authors neglected to discuss the traits of Agrasaurus used by its descriptors to set it apart from all other known horned dinosaurs. This led to Forster publishing a paper on the validity of Ugrasaurus in 1993. Her paper simply goes over all of the Ugrasaurus specific traits and finds them all to be present in Triceratops and Taurosaurus specimens, therefore making nothing about the Ugrasaurus holotype unique enough to keep the name valid. It was Forster who sunk the ugly reptile into Triceratops. There does of course remain the possibility that this specimen comes from a species of Triceratops separate from the two known ones, but its fragmentary nature combined with the time it comes from makes it near impossible to know for certain. Bye bye Agrosaurus, we never knew ye. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.